every time that we're learning Torah, we're basically learning only a piece of the Torah, like one verse or one word, sometimes even just one letter or just how to pronounce that letter, the vowels. The thing about the wisdom of the Creator is that every word of the Torah can connect you to Him. And who is He? He's the Ein Sof Baruch Hu. He's the Infinity, the Blessed Infinity. And today I wanted to share with you a piece of, of knowledge, a piece of information that is very unique, very special, that I found very useful in my life. Many people that are trying to serve Hashem and to commit themselves to Hashem, and first, first I'll, 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 I'll explain something small. There are many teachers, many rabbis, many inspirational speakers, people that will talk on different issues, that will choose different topics to talk about in their classes, in their speeches, because everyone from heaven is in charge on different sections of the world, on different souls. And um, from heaven, they chose me to deal with, uh, with people that are similar to me in a way that we... You remember that uh, Pink Floyd clip that uh, all of the children uh, are going into the meat uh, you know that grinder? So people like me that went through that system and been crushed by the, the iron wheels of the system and uh, somehow we made it out. So I'm representing my people and I'm helping those people to understand what, uh, how you can make it alive out of that crazy grinder. I'm not sure that you are one of my people, but I bless you to be. Everyone that loves me is one of my people. So I bless you to have Avat Israel, to love everyone. Now from heaven, they're appointing me and guiding me always to talk about what you should do with yourself after you fail. Because even if a person is trying to serve Hashem and to do the best that he can, always, forever, on the best side that can be, he cannot escape failures. He cannot. There is nothing that you can do in this world to prevent yourself from falling and failing. And I'm not basing my, my words on my life experience because the fact that I'm failing over and over doesn't necessarily mean that every one of you must fail. Just that I can see it in real life with all of my students, with people that are coming, with Baal Tshuva, that me myself is in this world of Tshuva close to 20 years and I can see that everyone are falling, that everyone are falling. And especially after reading what the Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, that if a person wants to become kosher, so he must go through thousands of up and downs in that process. And he won't be kosher before he will fail and stand up back on his feet, and then he will fall again and will try again. And that's the way. That's the way of this world. 
And from my experience, I realized that that is the main thing that people need to work on, to learn how to stand up back on their feet. So, I wanted to tell you a very small piece of information that is in 100% connected to Hashem. It means for all of us it can be a channel, a way, a ladder to come back, to climb back to Hashem from our downs, from our sadnesses, from our failures, from our sins, from our mistakes, from our fears. Hashem it Barach, it's written, I don't remember in which book, but it's written that one of the names of Hashem is En Sof Baruch Hu. He is the blessed infinity, endless. And it's written that this name, En Sof Baruch Hu, is one of the names that if the righteous people wouldn't write that name, so it wouldn't be allowed to write it. It wouldn't be allowed to pronounce it. If not that very righteous people already use that name and call the Hashem Barach in that name. But if they wouldn't do it, if they wouldn't express that name, wouldn't say those words, and Sof Baruch Hu, we today would not be allowed to use that name. It's such a high name that ideally, or like supposed to not to be used by people like us. It's too high. But those righteous people used that name and brought it down to our place that we gonna serve Hashem Barach with that name, that we're gonna have some work with that name, that we're gonna understand something about it. So, what is that name all about? What is it telling us? The end of Baruch Hu is a name that is describing Hashem before of the creation. We know that today we're calling Hashem. The Creator, we're calling the name Hashem. We're not pronouncing the word of His name, how that it's written in Yud K Vav K. We're not allowed to pronounce it. We're not allowed to say that name. We're allowed to see it. We're allowed to think it. We're allowed to hope for it, but we're not allowed to say it with our mouths because our mouth is not purified, pure enough to be able to say that name with a pure intention that it will not going to disgrace Hashem. So we're calling Hashem the name, we're calling the Creator the name, the name, Hashem, the name of all names, the source of all names. But what is a name? Let's say my name is Dror Moshe. So is that me? No, it's only my name. Me, I'm someone else, but I have a name. And we're going to use that name to call me. And when you're going to say Dror Moshe, I'm going to hear you, I'm going to come, you're going to call me, I'm going to answer. So it's not me, it's my name. So Hashem, and even Yud Kevavke, it's not Hashem himself, it's his name. That's a way like a handle, like, an, like, like a tool that He gave us to call Him, to connect ourselves to Him. Now we have some way to grab Him, some way to hold, some way to understand about His being, about His existence. But it's not something that is really showing to us who He really is. Because He is not His name. We're just using His name to call Him. But who He is... He is the one that is beyond that. And where is He? Now, we are in one side of the curtain. The world is blocking us from Him, that He is in the other side. But He is also hiding Himself here between those curtains. And we can see Him through the cracks. He opens a window, he opens a door, his light is so strong that it's illuminating through the curtains, through the walls, and you can recognize him, you can sense him, you can feel that he's with you, but you cannot see him. 
The verse is saying, A man cannot see me and to stay alive. Because the delight is so strong, too strong for us to, to receive, to enjoy from. It's going to blind us to see that light. So, what that Hashem revealed to me and helped me to understand is that people that are failing, that are falling, that are losing their minds once in a while, one of the hardest things for them to deal with, with is the fact that they are violating rules of the Torah, halachot. Like a person woke up too late, noon time, and he's not able to pray shacharit, so he will feel very upset, very sad, very depressed. He will hate himself for that. If a person was too hungry, too confused, too bothered, too I don't know what, and he found himself eating something without blessing, without washing his hands when you need to, or he didn't check the kashrut of that food, he will feel so bad with himself after. So I see that, I understand that, we do have a will to keep all Torah mitzvot, and we're commanded to do that, so we must, we're obligated to keep Torah mitzvot. So it's great that we will have that will, but like that we said, it's not like you can hold yourself back from failing. Because the verse is saying that there is no righteous man that will walk on earth that will do only good and not going to sin. So there is nothing that you can do to stop yourself from failing. There is only one thing that you can do is to learn how to stand up back on your feet after you fail. So my territory is to help those people that are dealing with that question and thinking on a way to get back into life, to start their life again, to give themselves another opportunity, another chance. And that calls the world of tshuva, olam tshuva, that you can come back, that you can come back to the Creator after you fail. A few days ago I heard an amazing chidush that one of the biggest admorim said in the last generation, something like 50 uh, years ago, and he said that the awakeness of tshuva is a very important thing, it's a great gift that we received from heaven, just he is wondering why the secular people received that gift and not the Haredim, not the Orthodox. <laughs> why the Orthodox are not doing tshuva? Like, what happened? A few weeks ago I gave a class and the woman came to me and she told me, you know, I'm so happy, my son is doing tshuva. So I asked her, oh really, what, what is he doing? So she said, he, 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 he did tshuva. So I told her, what do you mean he did tshuva? So she said, he's, he's keeping Shabbat and he's putting tefillin. So I told her, oh, so he's dati, he's religious. To be religious, it doesn't mean to do tshuva. Those are two different things. We're obligated in 613 obligations, mitzvot, great. And on top of those, mitzvot midoraita from the Bible, we're also obligated to keep mitzvot midrabanan. Also the holy righteous rabbis taught us that, we're, that we must make something more effort, that we need to create a fence to protect ourselves. So we need to do more than those 613 mitzvot. Those are mitzvot midrabanan, those obligations that our rabbis, our teachers, they obligated us to keep. Great, so we have some kind of, let's say, thousands of obligations that we need to keep. One of them called mitzvah tshuva, to come back to Hashem. Another one is to put filin. Another one is to keep Shabbat. So if now you're keeping Shabbat, it doesn't mean that you put filin. If now you're eating kosher, it doesn't mean that you are keeping Shabbat. The mitzvot came to us together that we're going to keep them all. Great, but really, in life, you need to keep every single one of them on his own, itself. The fact that you are not able to wake up and to pray in the morning doesn't exempt you from putting 
tefillin or from um, wearing tzitzit. You need to eat kasher food even if you're not able to keep Shabbat for a certain reason. If something happened, you still need to eat kosher. There is no connection that exempts you from one because of the other. And the fact that you kept one doesn't necessarily mean that you kept the other as well. You're not keeping Shabbat, so you're not keeping Shabbat. You cannot say, I am really, I'm, I'm keeping Shabbat if you just put filin. Everyone is also an individual mitzvah obligation. Now, the mitzvah of tshuva is a mitzvah that stands by itself. You need to come back to Hashem, means to confess, means to pray, to talk to Hashem and to regret and to apologize to Hashem on your sins, on your mistakes. And there is no connection between that to other obligations except of that if you missed one of them, you need to confess on it. If you didn't put fill in this morning, so you need to do tshuva on that. You need to tell Hashem, Hashem, I'm sorry. This morning I didn't put fill in. I was too confused. I was too tired. I had a crazy hangover. I don't know what. I found myself not putting fill in. Help me, Hashem, that I'm not going to do it again. That means not a tshuva. That's how you become a Baal Tshuva. To be a Baal Tshuva, it's not to be religious. To be religious, it's one thing, great, amazing thing. But also, you need to do Tshuva. So, I am here to teach those people that are trying to find their way back to Hashem, how to do that, how to come back to Hashem from those failures. Because everyone are failing. One is failing in Lashon Ara, he's talking bad things on others. One is failing in Kashrut and he put things in his mouth without checking what he ate. Another person is failing with foreign thoughts, with sadnesses, with depression, lack of faith, horrible thoughts. Everyone got something that is hard for him and he wants to come back from that place to Hashem, from that failure back to Hashem. On that we're going to discuss today. So, Hashem it Barach, it's true. He gave us the Torah, and He obligated us to keep all Taryag mitzvot, all the 630 mitzvot, and also the Rabbanan mitzvot on top of those. It's true. And we're obligated, and we must keep them all with no doubt. We're not allowed to move from the holy book, Shulchan Aruch. We need to keep all Torah, all mitzvot, as much as we can. We need to put our hearts and our mind and our effort to do it the best way that we can. Great. But... Like we said, we cannot ignore from the fact that we're failing on a daily basis and we're losing many things, many alachot are falling between our fingers, between the seats, and okay, wow, today I forgot to do this, oh wow, today I was wrong about that, and, and it happens. So, I'm going to cheer you up a little bit and I'm going to explain to you why nothing happened if you failed. And it's connected to the fact that Hashem Barach, one of his names is the Ens of Baruch Hu, that he is the blessed infinity. And the thing is like that. It's written to us that Hashem Barach, the Creator, he was learning and reading and enjoying himself with the Torah, ta takad generations before of the creation. Ta takad is a normal value of 400, and another 400, it's 800. Kuf, it's 100, so it's 900. Ein, it's 70. 974 generations before of the creation, we're talking about thousands, thousands of, 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 of years before of the creation, the Creator already had the Torah with Him. And he was reading it, and enjoying from it, and loving it, and thinking about it, and, 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 and he had his thing with that Torah. And then, after those 974 generations, he decided to create the world based on the Torah, based on what that he saw, on his wisdom, and he created the world. Now, we came to this world, been dressed in bodies, after the creation, the first man and Eve been created in the end of the, uh, of, of, of the six days of creation. But the Creator started in the beginning, in the first day. And the thought was an earlier thought when He was still the blessed 
infinity. Now, Hashem Itbarach, he's got that thing that he is hiding himself inside of this world. That's part of what the Hashem Itbarach is doing with us. He is hiding himself, he is taking his light and dressing it into the vessels of this world, into the physical vessels of the creation. And by that he is minimizing the light to the measurements, to the amounts that we can contain, that we can enjoy from. Now, part of those curtains, part of those ways that Hashem Barach chose to hide His light in, is those obligations, is the Torah and mitzvot. That when you keep the Torah and the mitzvot, you will be exposed, you will receive an, a way to enjoy from His spiritual light while keeping them through those channels. So when you put filin, you can enjoy a certain connection to the Creator that you wouldn't have if you wouldn't put filin. By keeping Shabbat, by eating kosher food, you can receive some spirituality that comes only through that pipe, through that channel, and you cannot enjoy from it unless you're going to keep that Mitzvah, that obligation. Sounds great. Perfect. Now, that is what that is pushing us to want to keep all to our mitzvot as much as we can. And to be open and to be pure and to have the vessels to contain as much as we can, to receive as much as we can. But like we said, we cannot prevent ourselves from failing, from falling. So what are we going to do in those dark hours that we cannot link ourselves, that we cannot connect ourselves, that we're falling and we cannot reach those amazing channels of purity, what are we going to do in that moment? In that moment, we need to remind ourselves that Hashem Barach, He was here, He was exist, also before of those Tatak Adorot, before those 974 generations, that he had the Torah, he was here, and he was endless, and he was blessed, and he was good, and everything was perfect. And our souls were with him also back then, before of creation. And we, inside of us, are those parts of infinity, of eternity. And when a person is falling, from being able to keep Torah and Mitzvot, he needs to remind himself that Hashem is beyond this world. That Hashem Barach, He loves you no matter where you are, no matter what, are you, what that you're able to do, how strong you are, how powerful you are, how big are your vessels. He was here before, and He will stay here even after this world will finish. He is the blessed endless. And when you, with your will, with your pure intention, with your heart, with your soul, focusing in that, putting your mind into that, that you and Him are one, beyond all of those obligations, and beyond all of those curtains, and all of those amazing tools and weapons that you have, before of all of that, you and Him are one. And the truth is that only the body is separating you, but the body is only temporary. So the truth is that you and Him are one. You and Him are one in a way that you can sense, in a way that you can feel how you can feel it, how you can sense it in the world of thought. In your mind, you can feel it. When you close your eyes and you're focusing on the fact that Father in Heaven he is with you beyond this world, before of the creation, even before of the Torah, you and Him are one. By thinking about that, you're connecting yourself from no matter where you found yourself back to Him. Even in the darkest place of them all, 
There is nothing that is holding you back from your connection and your commitment and your unity with Him. And that connection depends in one thing. It's called love. Love is desire. It's a pure will to connect to someone. It's a pure will to become one with someone else. To have the same thought, to have the same will, to have the same intention, to have the same happiness, to share the same wisdom, to be in the same place with the one that you love. When you love Hashem, you're connecting yourself to Him in a way that will never be separated. In the moment that you love Hashem, you and Him becomes one. This is why the normal value of the word love, Ahava, Aleph, Hey, Vet, Hey, is equal to the normal value of the word Echad, One, that it's Him. And another secret I'm going to tell you, that when you write the word Ahava, love, in the holy language, you write the first letter Aleph, and then you put the letter He that represents the name of Hashem. And then you put the second letter Bet, and then again you put the letter He that represents Hashem. In this world, an act like that of writing Aleph and then He, and then Bet and then He, is teaching us that the next part of that process is to write the letter Gimel and then He. The third letter and then to put He. And then Dalet, the fourth letter, and then to put another He. Because love is a circle. And when you say Ahava, you're actually bringing Hashem Itbarach, the letter He, to stand between all of the other letters. Between Aleph to Bet, between Bet to Gimel, between Gimel to Dalet, and Dalet to He. And that is the life spirit of the Creator, and that's the glue, and that's the love that is connecting this world to become one, like we said. Because if the couple had that merit, that they purify themselves enough, and they love each other, and they have peace, so there will be Shechina between them. Shechina it's Hashem. Hashem will hover between them and they will be blessed. Only because that they have love. Only because that they love each other. So when we love Hashem, so we are bringing Hashem Barach to our life, into our world. And there is no tool that is stronger than that tool to strengthen yourself and to find source of power, endless amounts of wisdom and inspiration and pure will to continue and to try again and to give yourself another chance and another opportunity to connect yourself to infinity, to the blessed one that is endless, that his love is endless. That his love is not depending anything that doesn't have no borders and no limitations. And that's him. And we can connect ourselves to him even after falling from all Torah and mitzvot. Even after failing and losing our minds and don't know the directions and lost completely and lying down on the floor on rock bottom in the lowest place of them all. You can reconnect yourself through your heart, with your pure intention to infinity and to find an outlet, to find a connection, to find a way out from that darkness. Because the truth, the love, the peace is light. And that light will illuminate every darkness. And that's exactly what it will happen to this world after Judgment Day, after days of Mashiach, that Hashem will show to us that there is no darkness and the night will shine and illuminate like the day. 
And you will be able to see that Hashem Barach is with you in the hardest hours of them all. Because even in the hardest times that you lose your mind, that you lose control, that you're falling and you don't see no way to hold yourself back from that failure, from crushing down to rock bottom, to crush completely. The only reason that you are afraid from those situations that you're terrified from experiencing those downs is because that you forget that Hashem Barach is with you. It's because that we let that fear, those anxieties, to overpower on us and their negative words are closing our minds from believing in Hashem, from having hope. The evil inclination is telling the person all of the time, you don't have hope. Hashem doesn't love you. Hashem don't care about you. He doesn't listen to your prayers. And the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, tries all of the time to give you proofs for that and evidence for that. Look, in that situation, you failed again. Hashem didn't help you. And if He would want to help you, He would. And you know that He can. And here He helped that person and to you He didn't. And no one cares about you. And you're going to fail again. And you're not going to make it. And all of the time He's breaking your spirit and trying to do only one thing. To separate you and to take control on you. To separate you from that glue that is connecting you to the divine will of the Creator. To become one with Him. From the Shekhinah Kedosha. From the love to the Creator. But the truth is that in the there is no one thing that is stopping you from wanting Hashem Barach. And if you want Hashem Barach, there is nothing that will stop you from coming closer to Him. Because Because that in the path, in the way that a person wants to walk in, they're going to lead Him in that path. And if you're just not going to give up on your will, you will find yourself achieving all of your goals and finding all of your dreams and your hopes come true. And those things are things that I myself experienced. I felt those things, I saw those things, I felt those things, I saw those things in my life. Things that I was praying for for years and I found them in the end. I saw that Hashem Barach with His wisdom, He was thinking in a better way than I. And I wanted to achieve those things right now. And I wanted to have those things immediately. But He knew better. He knew that I still don't have the vessels, so He chose to build those vessels for me and to help me to work on my humility and to work on my midot, all my attributes, that when I will receive that bounty, I'll have the way to hold it, to enjoy from it. If now you're thirsty and a person will throw water on you, just going to wash you, you won't be satisfied. You want to receive your water in an honorable way, in a cup that you will be able to say a blessing on it. You cannot say bracha, bless Hashem it barach, on, on, on water that are, are, are been thrown on your face. You cannot. It's humiliating, it's insulting, it's a shame. If now you're, you need money and someone will throw money on you like that, it's a disgrace. You don't want to receive in that way. You want with honor, you want to have a bank account to put your money in the bank, you want to have a wallet or at least a pocket. You need the vessels to contain the bounty. And Hashem Barach, He knows it. But we are so, so stressed and, 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 and so hungry and so lost that we're losing our mind from recognizing the amazing, precise, individual supervision of the Creator on every person, every individual, every single one of us. And He knows exactly what we need and what is needed for us and what is required for us really to achieve the purpose. And the purpose is to know Him, that He loves you with no end. That He's with you no matter what you do, no matter what happened with you, no matter what other people will say on you and going to think about you. You know in which tests King David was standing? You know who were the people that were fighting and arguing with King David? They were not Amaratzot. They 
were not ignorant people that were just going and cursing him. Ah, who are you? No! We're talking about the biggest leaders of that generation, on the chief rabbis, on people that were sitting in court. We're talking about the judges of our nation. The people that were arguing with Moshe Rabbeinu in the days of Korach, they were the heads of courts, they were the chief rabbis, the heads of the holy tribes. We're talking about hundreds of righteous people, geniuses, wise people, talented, gifted, ones that got the permission from heaven to lead our nation in the desert and in the days of exile in Egypt. But still, they were in that moment been chosen by Hashem to test Moshe Rabbeinu and to test King David. And King David and Moshe Rabbeinu and the rest of the righteous people in every generation are facing those people that are surrounding them and trying to shake their stability and to contradict on their healthy and stable and right assumptions and way of thinking in a healthy way and trying to sabotage and to destroy the connection of the poor souls that are desiring to come back to Hashem. And the evil inclination is celebrating and playing and being so happy and destroying and sabotaging and ruining souls, holy pure souls. So it's our war to fight for our people. It's our war to remind our friends that Hashem in Barach never left us. That there is only one thing that is separating us from Him and it's our thoughts. When you're positive and you're facing Hashem and you want Hashem and you're desiring Hashem and you do as much as you can, that's it, you're with Him. You're one with Him. Because when you feel and sense darkness, when you fall and fail, the truth is that Hashem in Barach failed you. Like the Degmara is saying, that Ilmale Kadosh Baruch Ozro Einoyacholo. Without the help of heaven, you cannot defeat the evil inclination. He's an angel that made out of clear fire. You cannot see a demon when it attacks you. You cannot sense it. In the world, you don't have the ability to see an angel. It's not in your power. And acid is not a solution for that. Stop thinking about that. It's not going to take you nowhere. Only the way of focusing into our inside, spirituality, real spirituality, pnimiyut, finding our inner connection to the Creator will bring us to a strong, stable, wide connection with real spirituality, with the truth of creation, to know Hashem, to recognize Hashem's will, to feel Him, to feel His presence, to understand His will, to get the message, to follow His signs, to nullify yourself completely to Him. That is an effort that every one of us are able to achieve. We can do that. We just need to want it. The obligation that we're reminding ourselves on the real way of how to connect ourselves to the Creator twice a day in Kriyat Shema, we're saying to ourselves, you need to love Hashem in Barach with all of your heart, with all of your spirit, with everything you have. In every situation, even if you fail, even if you fall, even if you lose your mind, even if you're so weak that you cannot function, that you don't have no ability to move one finger in Avodat Hashem, to serve Hashem with that finger, from that position, you should love Hashem. You should understand that Hashem is with you and He never left you, because you and Him are one. And there are no separations from Him. And especially those people that will come to you and will tell you that you are far from Him and that if you will do something, you will be far from Him. 
From those people, you need to stay away as much as you can. Because those people are the real enemies of our nation. Those are the real people that are bringing sadness and despair to the happy souls, to the yearning souls, to the shiny souls that are hoping to come back to Hashem Barach finally. So we need to strengthen each other. To help each other and to support each other with a smile, with a word, mentioning verses and inspiring words of Chizuk that we heard from righteous people. And just to tell them there is no despair in the world at all. You know what's the meaning of those words? There is no despair in the world at all. That if you're not going to give up, you will achieve what that you wanted. That's what it means. As simple as that. If you believe in those words of encouragement, if you believe that Hashem is here, how can a person lose his hope? I don't get it. What that I understand is that people that lose hope are people that are losing touch, that are losing the connection, that they're not thinking strong enough to keep on hoping to Hashem. But when you hope, you're with Hashem. And Hashem is answering everyone that calls Him with truth. So what's the problem to call Him? It's a free call. You don't need to pay. You just need to open your mouth and say, Hashem, come back to me. Let me come back to you. Help me. Let me do something useful. Let me do something for you. To connect ourselves to Hashem Barach from the darkness is hard exactly like to connect ourselves to Hashem Barach from the most shiniest place in the world. It's not harder and it's not easier. It's just literally the same. You just need to want Hashem. You just need to be one with Him. Hashem is not the salvation. Hashem is not the answer. Hashem is not money. Hashem is not health. Hashem is everything. There is nothing except of Hashem. Now, when you want success, now when you want honor, when you want money, cash in your wallet, so then you have a problem. Because Hashem wants you to have something else as for now. Because He knows what's better for you. Also your child, he wants candies. 7 a.m. and he wants candies. Okay, I understand. But first of all, you need to wash your hands. So Hashem is taking you and washing your hands. And then you need to pray. So Hashem is taking you and make you pray. And then you need to eat. And Hashem takes you and makes you eat. Sometimes He makes you eat what that you cooked. And that's what you need to eat. But it's only to educate you. It's only to bring you to that place that you will be answered. Because in the end, after you washed your hands, and after that you prayed shachrit, and after that you ate your breakfast, and you did, you fulfilled your obligation, no one will prevent you from those sweets that you wanted. Hashem will give you what that you desire, and more than that. Because He's a merciful Father and He wants to give. That's His nature, that's His will, that's who that He is. He's a loving Father. And He just wants to give. Just He wants to give it to you in a way that you will be able to enjoy from it. And not like that kid that wants to eat his sweets at 7 a.m. Before he's brushing his teeth, before he's washing his face, before he's washing his hands, before he's realizing that he's part of a world, of a community, of a functioning nation. So Shemit Barach wants you just to receive that sweet in the right time. For you, for your own good. And we just need to bring ourselves to that place. To that high, amazing understanding that Hashem never left us. The only separation that exists in this world is in our mind. Is when we are not thinking about Him. Is when we give space to the negative 
foreign, th- sad thoughts to control our minds. And then you follow the advice of the snake. But you are following the advice of the snake. Hashem is still there waiting for you to come back. A student asked me, what does it mean that a person that is saying, a person that is saying, I'm going to sin, and then I'm going to come back to Hashem, they don't let him to do tshuva. Usually in the world, the way that people interpret and explain that sentence is a very frightening way. Okay, now, if I'm not able to do something and I'm finding myself failing in that thing over and over again and again, and I'm not doing tshuva on it, and I'm not coming back to Hashem and apologizing and confessing and asking for forgiveness, so... They're saying, that's the way people are interpreting that verse, that they will not going to let you complete your tshuva also in the future. From heaven, they're going to hold you back to fix it, from fixing it. Terrifying. Every person can find himself in a certain period of time in his life that he doesn't want to do something, that he doesn't find the power to keep a certain mitzvah. And he's failing again and again. And he tried to do tshuva once and he couldn't do it again. And he's falling and he feels so embarrassed and so ashamed. And he's falling more and more. So now, on a person like that, that is saying to himself, I'm not able to come back to Hashem right now, but I want to in the future, they're not going to let you. Can it be? Can it be the right explanation? Come on, we're talking about Hashem. What are you talking about? Can it be the right explanation? No way, forget about it. Take it to the trash. That's not the right explanation. Throw it away from your window. That is not the right interpretation of those words. And the right interpretation is that when a person is saying, I'm not doing tshuva today. Today I'm going to sin. And tomorrow I'm going to do tshuva. So they don't let him to do tshuva when... Today. Why? Because he's not doing tshuva today. What is he doing? Saying, I'm going to sing today. So today he's not doing tshuva. And they're preventing him from doing tshuva because he is walking in that path that he desired. Like we said before. In the path that the person wants to walk in, that is the path that they will lead him. In the angels, the servants of Hashem will take you to the journey that you asked for. So now, when you're standing in the middle of your life and you're saying, Echta, I'm gonna sin, Vashuv, but I'm gonna do tshuva. So they don't let you to do tshuva. Why? Because you don't want to do tshuva. What you do want to sin? What are you saying? I'm gonna sin. And then I'm going to do tshuva. So where are they taking you? To sin. Because that's what you wanted. That's what you said. I'm going to sin. So they let you sin. You wanted to contaminate yourself. So they open it for you. That's what you want. Go for it. Do it. But if the person will decide in a certain day to come back to Hashem, And he will say, you know what? Today, I'm not sinning. That's it. Hashem, I'm sorry. Please help me. I don't want to sin anymore. Tshuva mo'il alakol. So tshuva is going to be useful for everything. Tshuva is going to help him. No one said that it's allowed to sin. It's not good. It's not healthy. It's not satisfying. It doesn't answer your real needs. After you sin, you feel thirsty. You feel horrible. You feel bad with yourself. You regret. You have horrible thoughts. You don't like it. Even if you received something from it, you received something that is not complete, something that is not satisfying you spiritually, something that is so temporary that most of the times, even while, during, sinning, you already feel regret and remorse and you want to fix it and you want to go back and you want to go out from that. You don't like sinning. 
So when the person is sinning, they just let him do that. Because Hashem said that the person will have a free will. But when you decide to do tshuva, there is nothing that is blocking you from coming closer back to Hashem by that tshuva. Tshuva is the biggest gift that's been given to the world. And like the that rabbi said, I'm wondering why the Frum people, the Orthodox people, they didn't have the marry to do tshuva. Only the secular people, they're doing tshuva. And why? It's a very simple answer. Because of the humility. Because when I was looking at myself when I was 20 years old, I knew I don't have anything. I knew I was worthless. I had nothing in my hands. All of my wisdom was empty. My assumptions were failing one after the other. I didn't know anything. If I would go and start talking with some scholar, with some Talmud Chachayim, I would say, I'm nothing, I'm zero. He's such a genius, he knows so much. But when you are a scholar, when you are a Talmud Chacham, when you know how to keep Oshul Chan Aruch, when you wake up in the morning and the, the road is fixed for you, the golden path, so then you imagine that you have something in your hand. And then you forget that you received the Torah Mimidbar Matana from the desert as a free gift. That only when you feel and know that you're dry like the desert, then you have the vessels to receive the Torah as a free gift. Because you need to understand that the Torah has been given to us as a free gift. Not because we deserve. Not because that we're worthy. Only because, and as a result of the loving kindness of our merciful Father, that wanted to give us diamonds and pearls and good stones. So only when you're humble and dry like the desert, and you know that you're empty, then you're a vessel that can contain. But when you're full of imaginations and you think that you know and that you're qualified and that you're something and that you contain and you have knowledge, you're a full vessel. You're a fool. And then you cannot contain no bounty. So Hashem in Barach is moving away like the water of the Torah that are going to the low places to the empty vessels, to fill them up. But if someone comes and is full of himself, <coughs> the Torah cannot penetrate, because that poor person didn't give it a space, a place. So we as people that are serving Hashem, that are trying to come closer to Him as much as we can, there is only one main thing that we need to do, and it's tshuva, because tshuva is humiliating you. Tshuva is bringing you back to that understanding, to the right perspective on life, to realize Hashem Barach is in charge of my life. I need Him for my success. I need Him for my health. I need Him for my happiness. I need Him for everything that I need. Because Tov Hashem Lakol, Hashem is good for everything. Hashem is good for health. Hashem is good for peace. Hashem is good for success. Hashem is good for money. Hashem is good to buy houses. Hashem is good to make aliyah. Hashem is good to, to do whatever you want, to polish your nails. You need Hashem. You think that you can polish your nails? All the women, they know that without Hashem, you cannot polish your nails. You can never make it. If Hashem doesn't help, you're not going to make it. You know that. One time, Rabbi Nathan, the student of Rabbi Nachman, came to Hashem, he came to Rabenu, and, and he told Rabenu, that he, Rabbeinu actually saw that Rabbi Nathan was lack of a button in his shirt. When Rabbi Nathan came to Rabbeinu, he was lack of a button. So Rabbeinu asked him, why didn't you fix your button? So Rabbi Nathan said, answered to him, I didn't have time and I wanted to come. And I thought to myself that I'm going to fix it when I'll come back home later. So Rabbeinu asked him, did you pray for it? Did you ask for Hashem Barak to help you to fix your button? So Rabbi Nathan couldn't understand what Rabbi Nathan is talking about. Like, what? I'm praying on houses, I'm buying properties, I'm doing six hours on big things, on my eyes, on my purity, on Shmirat Abri. On that you should pray. So Rabbi Nachman saw with his holy mind 
the understanding, the lack of understanding of Rabbi Nathan, and he rebuked him. And he asked him, do you think that you're able to fix your button without the help of heaven? Without that Hashem will help you to fix that button? You cannot move a finger without the help of heaven. Without Hashem, move your finger. A person won't be injured, won't feel nothing in his finger if they will not going to declare <coughs> that thing to happen from heaven. Every movement, it's written on Hashem that He's in charge of all the actions. Which actions? His actions? That's obvious. It's a disgrace to say to Hashem Barach, you are in charge in your actions. It's of course, that's obvious that He controls Himself and He's, he's doing what it is doing. You're in charge on all of my actions. Sheli, of mine. That I woke up this morning. Hashem, you're opening the eyes of the blind. You're waking people up. That today I ate, you fed me. That today I went and I learned, you taught me. Everything is from you and you're doing everything for me. The only war and the only battle that we have is to remember that. Not to let the negative thoughts, the thoughts of despair and frustration and sadness to reject us from that hope, to reconnect ourselves to the ends of Baruch to the endless love that is coming and revealing itself through the cracks, through the windows. And in the end, the night will shine like the day, like the brightest day. And you will see the walls are talking and the trees are whispering and the animals are speaking to you. And all the creation, you will see that it's a live creation, that it's all Hashem, and that there is nothing except of Him. And it's in our hands to remember that and to bring that light to the world. First of all, by knowing it ourselves, reminding ourselves that Hashem is with me, that Hashem is with us, that now Hashem is with me, but I failed. Yes, and Hashem never left me. Yes, but I'm down. Yes, and Hashem is with the poor. And Hashem is with the broken hearts. And Hashem is with the ones that don't have knowledge and with the innocent ones. And Hashem Ibarach is with me. Even in the most contaminated places. Thank you very much. May Hashem bring that light to the world. Amen. Can you let some this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.